Hello and welcome to Loud Creations. I am back with a new mead that I just started yesterday and I'm doing this one kind of for uh, Valentine's Day since that's right around the corner. I started this one yesterday and I am calling it Love Potion number nine because it was the ninth and there's a thing called Love Potion number nine. So that's what I'm calling it and it's for Valentine's Day. So I thought that was fitting. Um, I wanted to go ahead and share what I did to make this. To start, I will get into the ingredients. I don't really have exact measurements for stuff because I just kind of poured the herbs into the mesh bag to make a tea and I didn't weigh anything. But I'll go ahead and give you a list of the herbs that I included in the tea. So I, I used pink rose because pink roses can represent Cupid and Venus, among other things, but I'm trying to stick with this Valentine's Day theme. I also used hibiscus, which uh, I believe studies have shown actually helps with fertility. So it's a fertility herb. Uh, passion flower, it's a stress reducer, helps with anxiety, somewhat of a sedative, um, can also help with a lot of other things, but so that's just, you know, to get relaxed. And then the last one, uh, when I went to get uh, the roses uh, at this local shop, the gal there recommended that I use this herb as well because it's an aphrodisiac and it is called Damiana. And this has been used for thousands of years um, in Mexico and Central America, I don't know, if, uh, and by the Aztecs and the Mayans. Uh, and it it, ha it was used during those times to help with fertility and as an aphrodisiac. But what I read is studies have, there hasn't been enough, enough research to really prove that that's true. But I think the whatever has been looked into, it's not looking like that's the case. But I don't know. That's what was re recommended to me. So we got pink rose, hibiscus, passion flower, D damiana, uh, in the tea. So that's what I used to make the initial tea. And then I also used seven pounds of apples and I got a variety of apples. I got some really sweet apples, sweet and crisp tart, Granny Smith apples in there. Um, so yeah. And for this one, I tried using a new yeast. I'm using mangrove Jack's Mead Yeast, and I believe the alcohol tolerance for that is 18%, so we'll see how this works out. Seems pretty happy right now. From what I heard, it's not as sensitive to temperature and all of that, um, so I'm looking forward to seeing how this turns out. I also use GoFirm as my yeast nutrient, and I didn't put it on the counter when I took the video, but I used Pectic Enzyme as well, because the other ingredient is I just said apples. So I wanted to break down the apples or whatever. I want to reduce the haze. I used about, I want to say three and a quarter to three and a half pounds honey. I just dumped what I had left in one of container in and then the three pound container that I had that was full. And what I did is what I always do. I boiled about, I want to say two thirds of a gallon of water brought that to a boil and then I put the all the herbs into the mesh bag and tossed that in there and covered it and let that steep for about 15 minutes. And while that was steeping, I went ahead and I cored all of the apples and I cut them into cubes or, you know, chunks and tossed them in my two gallon bucket here. I wish I had a bigger bucket. I do. I have a six or seven gallon bucket, but I don't want to bust that out. So I, I put the apples in here and they filled it up quite a bit. Um, and I also had a lemon. So I cut that in half and I put the juice of that lemon in there. I also added my, um, I have lemon zest just because I didn't want to deal with the lemon peel. So I used my dried lemon zest. I just put a little bit of that in there. Once the tea was done, I went ahead and took the bag out, squeezed it a little to get all the goodies out of there. And then I added my honey directly to the pot and stirred it up really well until it was no longer separate from the liquid and it was all together. I took a little bit of the liquid out and put it aside and started my Go Firm slurry as well with half a teaspoon of Go Firm. Yeah, go firm. I always want to say firm a dough. Go firm. Uh, and um, then I poured the tea and the honey over the apples. 
stirred it up really well. I topped it off with, I want to say, uh, probably 20 ounces of cold water to cool it off. Once the go firm was ready, I poured that in and then I just sprinkled my, my yeast on the top, stirred it up really well and put the lid on. Oh, I did a gravity reading. The gravity is uh, 1.142 approximately for this. I'm hoping to, and I don't know if the, the sugar content will increase once the apples start to break down. I can assume that it will. My goal is to let this just dry out and have a little bit of residual sweetness, but if that doesn't work out, I'll, I'll back sweeten it a tiny bit. Um, the one thing I will say, oh, airlock, top, that. I probably should have put the apples in. I have these nut milk bags, but I didn't. I just tossed them in there. So I don't know if this is going to end up being really hazy. And that's why I put the pectic enzyme in there. So I'm hoping that helps a little bit with that. And yeah, so that's that's what I did. And now I have to feed it with some Ferme dough. And I thought I'd, I might as well do it now. So that's, let's take the lid off and see what's happening. As you can see, it's been bubbling away this whole time. It's pretty happy. It smells really good too. That hibiscus and rose together and apple smells really nice. Take that off. Ooh, that's a big mess. Um, forgot my spoon. I'll be right back. Okay, because this is approximately a gallon, I'm putting a quarter teaspoon of fermato in and I'm going to do this today, tomorrow, day after tomorrow, and then around the seventh day. And that's just, I do it that way because I'm too lazy to take a gravity reading to see how much of the sugar has been eaten up. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I'm doing myself any favors by doing it that way, but it is what it is. So. I'm finding that I do enjoy making the meat, but I actually, the part that I enjoy the most, I'd say, is coming up with recipes. So I get a little little lazy on the technical stuff, but that's okay, because it works for me. Uh, but yeah, let me get this. Okay, so I'm gonna just stir this up with my big spoon here, which I just sanitized, because I don't want to risk uh, ruining this, because this, is already one of my favorites, even though I haven't <laughs> I haven't finished it yet. I mean, unless something goes terribly wrong, um, this just sounds amazing to me. I don't know if you can see the apples in there, but they're yeah, it's all foamy and happy, especially now that I put the fermato in. I'm guessing I have, I'm going to end up with more than a gallon here. So the only other time that I've used apples, I always just end up using apple cider when you're doing a sizer. So I don't know. If, um, the only other time was for my spiced elderberry um, mead that turned out really well when I tasted it. I still need to bottle that. Um, but anyway, so, and I used green apples for that and it really, really added a nice element to the flavor overall. Um, so yeah, what are, what are, what's the plan here? <laughs> what am I gonna do <laughs> after this is done? So uh, I'm gonna let this ferment for, on the apples for about a week and then I'm gonna rack it off of here. I'll probably be back with another video to do that, hopefully, if I get myself to do it. <laughs> Um, and at that time, I'm going to add a little spice. So the other part of this is, let me see here, my notes. Yeah. So I'm going to add a cinnamon stick because cinnamon also can represent love and passion and, you know, action. <laughs> so, uh, I was going to add some cinnamon to this and possibly a split vanilla bean just because I have vanilla beans and I always enjoy a little vanilla in most of the meats that I've made. Like when I add the vanilla, I'm happy with it. So yeah, that is it. 
This is love potion number nine. I was going to make a three gallon batch because I have a three gallon carboy, um, but I didn't have enough honey and I'm kind of bummed because that would have been fun. But I also would have had to use my six gallon fermenter. And like I said, it's, it's up in a closet and it needs to be cleaned. And for whatever reason, I don't want to do it. And I'm sharing that with everybody who's watching. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are with a one gallon. Um, but if this turns out well, this is probably going to be one that I'll, I'll make big batches with. Um, I'm kind of starting to, as a mead maker, move into that so that I can share more. Um, I like to give bottles to the beekeeper that I buy the honey from um, when I'm able to buy the honey from the beekeeper. And um, other people, like even the shop where I get some of the herbs that I use, I've given them a couple bottles and friends and family. And it would be nice to have bottles left over for aging, you know, after. Because once, once you rack and do all this stuff with one gallon, you're lucky if you get four regular size bottles. And um, I find that I think I use the smaller smaller bottles now, and I get about five of those, at least the last couple meads that I've made. So it, it would be worth my while, I think, at this point to make bigger batches. And um, so I have more available to age beyond a year even. Um, and then when I'm making labels, it won't feel silly because I'm making only right now, like for my pumpkin spice mead, I've made labels and I only had to make five. It just, it's kind of sad. <laughs> so, but I'll, I'll save the label for when I do a big batch of that, I guess. I'm rambling now, so I'm gonna cut this off. Um, and uh, next time you see me with this, uh, hopefully, if I pull, bust out my camera, I will be racking it and adding some spice. I hope this video is useful and happy Valentine's Day to everybody. And I will see you next time. Thank you.